Are you ready to learn what is a plant rescue? I'm doing this video because I hope that one day you may see a piece of land that is about to be developed and you take the time to reach out to the contractor and you're able to save hundreds of plants and get your friends to join. I'm going to show you an example. This was all made possible by this beautiful woman in the image, Nora Luce. She was at a catering event and she realized that it was to raise money for this big senior center that was going to be developed. And so she reached out to the contractor bravely and the contractor, thankfully, we give thanks for him, gave her permission to rescue the plants. And it was all because of her connection with wax myrtle, which is one of her favorite plant allies. She's taking botanical medicine movement and loves wax myrtle. And she saw it on the property. And that's when she asked for permission to rescue. And so all of this footage is from three to four rescues that we did. And I'm going to show you an end result of a garden that I planted on our property with the plants that we rescued. All right, let's get started. Okay, let's talk about habitat. This is a sweet grass flat. It's full of sweet grass, which is Mullenbergia capillaris. And a lot of times these flats will occur across or in between coastal dunes. And it was interesting as we were rescuing the sweet grass, they were full of old shell deposits on the bottom. So it was almost like it was an old ocean bed. Here's my dog Milo in the sweet grass. It's very open, almost savanna-like, and you only see a couple cedar trees and a couple dwarf palmettos. Beautiful, beautiful habitat. And so I estimate that there are probably 10,000 sweetgrass clumps in this habitat. This grassland habitat is becoming very rare, and as humans, we enjoy it. So here's my daughter and her best friend, Eliza, running around. Sweetgrass is a culturally significant plant for the Gullah Geechee community along the Sea Islands that makes sweetgrass baskets from it. The native populations are disappearing due to development, and this is one of the largest populations I've ever seen in my life. It's a very important population. And I want to say this really quick about the sweetgrass. The, sweet, the native sweetgrass bends and is more flexible. The ornamental that we see that is planted um, a lot of times in houses, median strips, parking lots, it does not bend like the native population. And they're not encouraged, the Gullah Geechee community aren't really allowed to go out and harvest in these ornamental settings, right? And it's not even um, as easy for them to make baskets from it. And so it's important for us to protect these native populations and when we find them, definitely rescue them, right? Thankfully, Jenna Faye came out. She's a gulla basket maker in Charleston, South Carolina, and she came out and rescued a bunch of sweet grass, and she's gonna come back out and rescue more. The other habitat that was there in abundance was wildflower fields. And so this is um, an old, field that was cut over, it's early successional habitat, and there were all these wildflowers and tons of pollinators. And so here's a little video of me out in the field where I'm talking about the benefit of the pollinators. What if we all replaced our grassy lawn monocultures with something like this? There are probably 20 plus, I don't know, maybe even 30 different species of pollinators out here right now that I see. And all this land, all of these beautiful plants are going to be removed in two weeks. This is going to be developed. And this happens every day. So then there's developments, and then we plant grass, okay, where there used to be wildflowers and diversity. And our pollinators are starving, and we're making ourselves more vulnerable. And so we really, really have to protect this diversity. So I have planted some of these at my house. I'm going to plant more. I'm going to rescue these plants. And then I'm also um, going to save some of the seeds. And I strive to plant 85 to 90% native plants because the timing is 
It's synchronistic, right? These pollinators need the food right now. And these wildflowers are blooming. They're native and a lot, both of these are annuals. So there's agalinus and this is hilarious. There were a lot of perennials there too. And so this is Eastern horse mint, Monarda punctata. This is a species that occurs in the maritime forest. So there was a mix of plants from the maritime forest and salt marsh habitat and um, sand dune plants. So let's talk about the rescuers. Who came out to help? And so this is Jessica Hoon. So when you do a rescue, you wanna call all your friends and family. This is Van Childress. She came out and helped me rescue Beautyberry. This is Nora. So you wanna try and get as many people as possible. This is Dana. She's taking botanical medicine movement. She was able to come out and rescue a bunch of horse mint. This is um, me. I rescued some willow and some yucca. And this is Dana again with the Eastern Horseman. I can't wait to see how it does in her garden. This is Debbie Seabrook. She came out and rescued a bunch of the sneezeweed and sweet grass. And this is Jennifer. Jennifer is a basket maker in Charleston, South Carolina, and she came out to rescue. This is Stephanie. Stephanie is taking botanical medicine movement. She came out to rescue even with a hurt leg, hurt foot. And this is Kristen Morell. She came out and rescued. She was smart. She brought a tarp. And so it's really good to bring a tarp, a wheelbarrow, or a wagon. I couldn't live without my wagon. I was able to fit probably like 50 plus plants. And definitely bring kids. When you go out and rescue, teach them what's happening, right? And so I brought my daughter out there, and this is her best friend, Eliza. And by the end, she was realizing, and she started helping me rescue plants, and here they are carrying them out. It's so important that we teach the youth the importance of saving biodiversity. And how, I'll be honest, how I got my daughter in the car is I said, Anna Rose, you wanna go rescue some critters? And she jumped right in. I think they reached their quota of their time. Anna Rose has been out here since 9.30. She's tired, but she did good. She found walking sticks. You wanna show them the walking stick on the phone? Whoa. How cool is that? So we're gonna rescue this cool insect too. Yeah. And here's Eliza, she's helping. So we're gonna go and... Remember to bring all your friends. Okay, hopefully you're excited and you wanna do a plant rescue. If you do a plant rescue, wear gloves, long pants, boots, bring a shovel, a big shovel, bring a tarp, a wheelbarrow, or a wagon, all right? This is us at the end of the day. We were exhausted. Make sure you have plenty, plenty of water and make sure you have some food afterwards, especially if you bring the little ones. All right, what to do with all these plants? Once you rescue the plants, this is an important part, okay? You have to get them in the ground that day or the next day or at the most within two or three days. So here is an area at my house that has nothing but grass. And so it needs also a barrier, a garden, in between the area of the driveway and the house. And I was able to take all of the plants I rescued and make this beautiful coastal dune, this artificial coastal dune, and save the diversity. And so I'm going to show you how. So here's the finished product. That's my coastal dune heritage garden. And so there's yucca, dwarf palmetto, sable miner, Dune, camphor weed, heterotheca subaxillaris. It has beautiful yellow daisy flowers. Super excited to have this in the garden. Common germander. A croton. It's a coastal dune croton that you typically see. Here is the sweet grass, Mullenbergia capillaris. It's beautiful. And there are several other species in there that I'm not showing you. Here's goldenrod. Here's more sweet grass that I planted. I'm trying to water it in twice a day for a month. That's my goal. Here's the sneeze weed. So I planted this in the front garden. And here is beautyberry. And so this photo really gives me hope because the day that Nora and I talked, they had started to clear and both of us wanted to cry and felt like our stomachs had been punched. And that day the beautyberry opened. It had looked like it was dead. It wasn't going to come back to life. And then all of a sudden, these beautiful leaves opened up. And that was the day that they broke ground. And so I saw it as a sign of hope. 
And so I hope you enjoy this video and I hope that it inspires you to get out, try and find a lot wherever you are, wherever you live, call the contractor, try and find a way to rescue the plants because a lot of times the lots are just bulldozed and all the plants are removed. And native plants are gorgeous in the landscape and you really help to support the ecosystem by planting native plants. And then if you ever wanna learn how to use their medicine, contact us, Your Holy Herbal School, we focus on native plant medicine. All right, here's some more plant rescues and here's the connecting with our native medicine.